Hello YouTube and thank you once again for tuning in to Auto Transport for Dummies where we talk about all the things you dummies want to know out there. So in this clip we're actually at the Chandler Arizona Airport and we're actually just talking about what we would do or what I would do if I was going to ship my car. Okay, step one is going to be honestly just finding a company you can trust because if you can't trust the company from day one, you're, you're just already screwed. Okay, you're already screwed. And when I say trust, in order to trust the company, you need to find the Yelp page, you need to find the Google reviews page, and you need to find somebody or a company that's very responsive and a company that's not guaranteeing you and giving you yeses to all your questions, okay? We commonly encounter this where customers say, yeah, I just got off the phone with 15 companies. They all told me, yes, 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 yes. Yes, we can guarantee that. Yes, we can beat that rate. Yes, we can do this. Yes, we can do that. If you get that many yeses, I can almost guarantee you that it's going to be a disaster of a transport, okay? They're just trying to lock in the deposit, lock in the booking. Uh, and once that happens, they're like MIA or they're going to go back to doing their normal routine, okay? I've listed it at way low rates. They, they, they probably won't move the car anyway. I've told you guys endless times, okay, what effing good is a quote from a company with 442 negative one-star Yelp reviews that literally outline the same like story every review, which we can go through and show you. Quoted this price, it took this price. Guaranteed this date, they didn't show up. Told me this, driver canceled. Cancellation fee. Didn't even move the, I mean, the list goes on and on. Non-responsive, got a deposit, went MIA. Why on God's green earth would you decide you wanna go with that company because you got a low quote after you read all those reviews? You've got to do your due diligence on the front end, get a company you can trust, and then we can proceed to step two. And number two is gonna be scheduling, okay? People have endless requirements and demands that they place on these transports. We always are recommending maximum flexibility, maximum like, uh, you know, maneuverability when it comes to adjusting your dates and ranges. If I was gonna move my own car, I would easily have a whole week or block off, of, off a week, or I would ship my, if I needed my car at a destination by a certain date, then I would ship it early, probably like a week early, five to six days early. And there's many ways to accomplish this. Even if you don't have somebody there, you can ship it to a dealer. We've been, lately been instructing people to just set up an oil change at like your uh, nearby Chevy dealer, wherever the car is being transported to, have them do like an oil change or something, and then also have them accept the car. Um, and just by setting up some kind of service, all these places will generally accept your car. Um, or you can find a coworker. If you're moving to a new job, uh, you can find a neighbor. Uh, there's so many ways to do this. Uh, you could probably even hire somebody maybe. I mean, maybe that service will be available at some point, <clears throat> but it's so much easier on us, on you, on the entire situation. If you just ship the car early, if you need that car there by a certain date. The thing is, people a lot of times want to hold the car all up until the last moment. So they're in Los Angeles. They want to drive the car all up until like, you know, that day before they leave. And then they, they want a truck to be sitting right there to pick up that car. The day before they leave, they hop on their plane and then, ooh, the car is dropped off the exact day they get there or two days later or whatever. You're really asking a lot for the transport companies to be able to pull this off. Because again, as we have explained, this is entirely market-based. So you are at the mercy of the options that are uh, available in that area at that time. And based on how many demands you put on the request, that can also raise what the rate will take, okay? Um, and not only that, you limit potentially good options to move the vehicle if you shrink that date range down to nothing. Well, now you're just at the mercy of whatever dates you're requesting, okay? And whatever 
options, uh, not just trucking company options, but what they want to move it as well. I mean, if you only have two days, there's only two trucking companies that want it and they both want like some high rate, well, that's what you end up with, okay? Flexibility, flexibility, flexibility. I, I don't know how many times I gotta say it. It is everything in this industry. It is it is literally the most important factor in, in getting what you want out of your transport by far, okay? And to add on to that, okay, is scheduling in advance. I have a lot of, I feel like know-it-alls that call us and think that the industry works like the airline industry where you can book in advance, you get a cheaper rate. No, this isn't the airline industry, okay? Airlines got like 300 seats in a plane. They're trying to sh like book every seat. So of course, they're gonna offer them cheaper initially. Those routes are already predetermined. They're already set up. The planes know where they're going. These trucks have no idea where they're going. They don't even know where they're gonna be five or six days out from today. Because as we've uh, you know, gone over, they are following the money from city to city. If there's a lot of high paying loads coming out of Miami, going to Portland, they'll go to Portland. If there's a lot of loads coming out of Miami that are paying a lot of money going to Detroit, they might go to Detroit. They don't know where they're going. Yes, some companies have routes they run over and over and over, but in many cases, they're just following the money as well. And they can always adjust those routes and take a different route if there's a lot of demand for a different route. Because it's all about revenue. It's all about making money. If the driver knows he can make another 3K, the dispatcher knows he can make another 1,500, they're gonna do a different route, okay? They can go anywhere they want. So this is not the airline industry. Booking your transport well in advance does not really do a lot for you uh, because trucks just don't know where they're gonna be in five days or even six days in most cases. They're just following the loads, following money. They don't know what loads they're gonna even want more than maybe a week out, okay? So what that means is you thinking that you're gonna get a better deal by scheduling a transport three months in advance is pretty wrong thinking, okay? There's always options every single day, other than maybe the weekends, which is a little low, but there's always thousands of trucks moving through all these cities at any given time, always trying to book orders. So the bigger factor by far is flexibility, okay? Because even if I say, oh, I wanna move my car December 10th and 11th, well, guess what? That still is only two days, that's it. And when you only have two days, again, the options will not even be presenting themselves until maybe five, six days out, if that, or even closer to the 10th or 11th. So you're not even gonna know what options are gonna be on the table until maybe the 7th or 8th or 9th. And they might be good options, they might not be. But if I say, oh, I can move at any time from December 10th to the 18th, well, man, that's like that's like a cakewalk because now all these trucks looking at the order can contact us and say, hey, we can pick it up on the 12th. I can grab it on the 15th. I can grab it on the 13th. It's, it's so good. It's so easy. And you end up with the highest quality truck, the best possible rate, everything that you're wanting when you do it like that. Now, I understand some people cannot pull that off they don't have that kind of ability to be that flexible. But if you can be, that is the way I would do it if I was shipping my car. Okay, and honestly, I was gonna make a long, longer list, but really, if you just do the first two, I mean, you've got like a 90% chance of your transport going very smoothly, really, 90%. Uh, because that's how critical those two factors are. The company is everything and the scheduling is everything. Those two factors lead to a good experience or a terrible experience, okay? Don't try to be stupid and, oh, I see this low rate dangling, I'm gonna go with that. And I'm just gonna ignore the 420 negative reviews or, you know what, I know he said scheduling is important, but honestly, I don't wanna bother with renting a car I'm just gonna try to have my car picked up literally when I arrive at the airport or whatever. These types of conditions are gonna lead to a bad experience. Gonna, I, I mean, potentially, not, hopefully not, but very good chance you're gonna end up in, a, in some kind of problem if you try to plan your, your setup in that way. Now, a few uh, honorable mentions that I'll just rat off real quick here. Uh, 
putting items in the car, okay? Keep those to a minimum. If you put items in the trunk, that's almost never an issue. Nobody cares about that. Uh, if you put them in the front or back seat uh, of, of like the cab, it cannot be above the window line of the car and they cannot be uh, in the front or passenger driver areas and nothing heavy, okay? If you really load it up, you're gonna end up incurring another $100 or $200 charge from the trucking companies. It's not, our, not anything we or any other brokers charge and just trucking companies are just going to not take the order if you really load up the car, okay? Okay, and then honorable mention number two is gonna be documentation, making sure when the car is picked up, you have a copy of the bill of lading, you have very good photo evidence as to the current condition of the car. Make sure you have very good photo evidence as to the condition of the car when it arrives to you at its destination. Um, and we also advise anybody and everybody, if there is any kind of small situation like a nicked mirror or a scratch bump or something, minor, okay, minor, the, the key there is working it out with the driver and the dispatcher on delivery. And what typically will happen is they will compensate you relative to whatever the damages are. So if there's a small nick, maybe they offer you a $400 discount or $300 discount on the transport cost that you owe them. So if you owe 1,300, maybe they discount you 300 bucks and then you get a thousand. I understand that's not a perfect scenario, but whenever something happens, it's never perfect, okay? It's not fun dealing with insurance either and making 400 phone calls. So if it's something minor, that's the best way to handle that is dealing with it directly on delivery. The trucking companies in most cases, if they are at fault, they will compensate you in a fair manner in almost, in most cases, okay? The three honorable mention is gonna be, don't stress everyone out, okay? Do your homework, find a place of comfortability and don't text and call everybody 300 times a day or you're gonna stress everyone out. You're gonna stress the trucking companies out uh, you're going to stress yourself out. You're going to stress us out. So you kind of got to find that place of comfortability before you set up the order. Now, obviously, customer service, the company you're working with should have good customer service. But I am saying there is a level of like paranoia that some people seem to enter into where we just have to cancel the order out because we just simply don't have tons of hundreds of hours or minutes in a day to constantly deal with the same person who's really just freaking out over nothing or they're 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 losing their mind over something that's like like very minimal like you know we've had situations where a truck breaks down there's like a one day or two day delay and we're getting blown up on the hour every hour the guy thinks his car is missing it's going to mexico it's at the bottom of the river and we're like literally sending him photos of the vehicle on a trailer at a love's truck stop just getting a tire repair um and so if that's the kind of person you are I, I don't know what to tell you you might need to just drive your car have your friend drive it or something like that because that's not a fun experience for us not fun for you um so again you got to find that place of comfortability at the get-go okay and just trust the process okay and finally if you are an incredibly anal person about your car you love your car you can't imagine a single nick or anything on it well i'm sorry you can't also be dirt cheap you're gonna have to ship it enclosed we're gonna have to put it on a high end, one of the best quality setups we can, and you're gonna just have to pay for that. And again, flexibility remains key. Oh, and final honorable mention is just communication, okay? Just make sure you communicate properly your scheduling, what you what you need, what you want. Don't just assume that, it, that things are gonna happen how you want. You've gotta be very clear about the needs and the requests you have. If you want high quality, if you've got an incredibly tight date, like you have to have a car moved by, whatever the case is, you have got to communicate that very, very directly and clearly, uh, because that can have a, that can lead to some kind of a breakdown uh, where you don't end up with what you want if you don't communicate those things, those needs clearly, okay? Because every order really is truly totally different. Um, and that, that should pretty much do it for the video. Uh, Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Happy hauling.